Hi, it's Mike Reese. I've been writing for The Simpsons for 30 years. I ran the show in seasons three and four. I created The Critic. And now I've written a book. It's called Springfield Confidential. And it is the first insider's look at The Simpsons. It's filled with secrets, scandals, and tales of censorship and celebrities. It's a great book. It's like a Simpsons episode. It's fast, it's smart, and it's packed with hundreds of jokes, some of them funny. Please buy Springfield Confidential. You can order it now on Amazon.com. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Best Darn Diddly Review Show. This is a weekly podcast for anyone who loves The Simpsons, or ever has loved The Simpsons, hosted by two dudes that grew up on The Simpsons. My name is Miles, better known as Mr. Most Days Off, and today we are celebrating somebody else's meaningless milestone. We're talking about the 100th episode of The Simpsons, Sweet Ski- Ski more. Sweet Seymour <laughs> Skinner's Badass Song. And of course, we are going way bigger than they did on this when they even make fun of themselves for not celebrating. We say screw that. We're celebrating hard. We've got a great special guest. And of course... Joining me as always, your co-host with the most, Richie the Whiz Kid. How you doing today, Rich? I'm a little upset with you, man. I think the appropriate title is actually Sweet Se- Sweet Seymour Skinner's <laughs> You can't say it any better than I can, dude. Song. You gotta get all five S's in there on the badass. That's true. I messed up. <laughs> but yeah, as usual, we will get right into this S- this awesome episode. I'm not gonna be able to talk today. Oh my gosh, it's, it's gonna be one of finally. those. Hopefully you know what? You guys have it, have it back. Have it back. The man, the myth, the raisin roundy. It is Miles. Hey, those are poisonous to dogs. I'm actually quite upset about that joke, but we'll save that for when <laughs> we get there. I've already insulted him on Friday by saying he's a Grammy Award winner. That's not right. He's an Emmy Award winning return <laughs> guest to the show. Simpsons writer and creator of the show F is for Family, Michael Price. Welcome back to Best Darn Bid- Best Darn Diddly, Michael. I can't even say the name of our own show. It's going to be a rough conversation, but uh, hopefully you're in good spirits. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'll try to hold up my end. Any, uh, <laughs> somebody's got to. Somebody's no, got to. No, very glad to be back with you guys. Uh, we're very glad to have you back, sir. Uh, last time we spoke, it was uh, right before the second season of F is for Family released, and now that is the, that's been out to rave reviews from what we've seen. We really enjoyed it. Uh, what's going on now new with F is for Family? Well, we are about halfway through production on season three right now. So uh, right after we came out last May, uh, we were very happy to get the nod from Netflix uh, to start on season three. We began writing it season three right away. Uh, so all last summer through around uh, Halloween, the beginning of November, we were writing uh, our 10 episodes and we did our table reads and our records. And now we are in production. So uh, what's happening right now is that we've seen all 10 episodes come back in what's called animatic form, which is um, your basic uh, kind of storyboard of the show in very limited animation. So we're able to see the shows come in, uh, the staff gets back together, we watch them all together. Uh, we identify what works, what doesn't work. We rewrite it a little bit. Then we get the actors to come back and re-record new lines. And then we uh, go into the editing room with our editors. And we have uh, a very great crew of uh, animators who work here in our offices in Hollywood who do re- revisions to the storyboards. So uh, they revise the storyboards. And then we have about three very intensive editing sessions where uh, myself, Bill Burr, uh, Peter Billingsley, our other executive producer, and uh, usually the writer of the episode, we sit together and we really just uh, edit and you know fine tune the animatic as close as we can, uh, so they can get, then be sent off to be animated at our animation studio, which is in uh, Montreal, Canada, called uh, Oasis. And um, so all ten episodes have gone through that most of that phase right now. We'll be getting our first color episode back of episode one in about a couple of weeks or so. And then we'll start on that process, which means then we then watch the shows in color. And we do the same thing where we watch them all together. We assess what works and what doesn't work. And we have a chance to make a few small changes here and there to fine tune the jokes and uh, hopefully uh, 
And we find if we find any technical mistakes or anything like that, we fix those. And then we go into the final phase, which is post-production, which is, you know, music and editing and sound effects and stuff like that. And then we put it all out. That sound uh, you make it sound so easy with with the way you put it. <laughs> <laughs> So with all of those processes in place, I know we don't have a, a release date yet, but I mean, can you give no. us a ballpark of when you think this might be yeah. coming to fruition? Yes, uh, probably. We're hoping it'll be towards the end of this year or uh, depending on how we do in terms of if we make all our milestones in terms of getting it all, all the animation done and there isn't any, any major malfunctions or anything. You'll see it be between now, be sometime before the end of the year, before the end of 2018, the, the end of 2018. Uh, if for some reason we have any delays, then we would see it towards like the beginning of, of 2019. Very cool. But somewhere in there, somewhere in there. And I know I've seen just a, a taste of it compared to what I'm sure you deal with on, on Twitter and all the social media and whatnot. But I'm sure there's already people wondering, well, it's been approved for season three. Why aren't they coming out yet? Right. Why isn't it now? Why isn't it now? <laughs> I know. Well, that's the that's the blessing and the curse of Netflix is that you get all the shows come all out at once, and uh, and then everyone's like, "Where's the next one now? I want now." I, I, that's the way I was with, uh, let's say, something like Stranger Things. I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't want to know. Wait another year. Yeah, I want it now. You that know? is so such I a good understand. show. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great show. So I understand, but you know, it's just uh, it's the nature of how it works. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference difference with a show like Hampshire Family than let's say The Simpsons." is because The Simpsons is not serialized, um, we're able to put those episodes out as soon as they're done. Uh, with Netflix, uh, the Netflix model, which is serialization, and then they release all 10 episodes at once, we can't put number number one out until number 10 is finished, and they're all finished. So that's just the way that it works. So it takes a little bit of extra time, and animation takes extra time. If this was a live-action show, you know, it would probably take not as like I know that I noticed like uh, there's that show called Grace and Frankie with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. They've done like something like four or five seasons in in like three years, you know, because <laughs> yes. because, uh, you know, live action, it just takes a little bit a little quicker in that way. Right. You know, right. animation is like you got to have people drawing everything. Yeah, it's uh, a completely whole new set of steps to go through in editing as well, I imagine. Yes, well, you you yes. got to be approved right. for it first, too, right? Like Netflix didn't approve season three until after two was already out. So you can't that's start the, the process. Way they, that's the way they like to do it. They like to wait until the show comes out to see by their metrics how it's doing. Uh, and then they let us know, like within a couple of weeks after it comes out, if we're going to do more or not. See, that's surprising um, after the I don't know. I know last time we talked about watching South Park. I don't know if you kept up with the most recent season, but they kept joking that to get a show approved on Netflix. Now, you basically just have to call in. <laughs> well, Netflix is doing a lot of a lot of shows, you know, but I mean, they're also, they've also been canceling some shows. That's true. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, interesting thing is that uh, Netflix, I mean, I won't say a bad thing about them. They've been really wonderful. Everyone there has been great, very supportive of us along the way. Uh, very, very, very little in the way of what you would call, you know, not interference, but like, you know, notes and stuff like that. They, they just give like very helpful, smallish notes. Like, you know, maybe this shot should be a little bit longer or can we cut to a close up of Frank here? So we, you know, things like that, nothing along the way. Of other of other experiences I've had with other places where you work with, let's say your giant networks, sometimes they get very noty. Sure, this is a little bit more artist friendly, it seems. Yeah, I'd say. I mean, with us, with us certainly. I don't know about other. You know, I've been talked to people who work on other shows, but uh, you know, they're very, very, very encouraging. They've been great along the way. They come to every table read. They they love it. They love the show. They're telling us we're doing great, but they just won't tell us you know, for whatever reason, contractual, or whatever, they, they wait until we come out and we see how it's doing and how, how they gauge how it's doing before they like pick us up for another season. We would be so happy if they said, let's do, you know, three seasons in a row or something like that. We'd be thrilled, but um, that's just the way they do it. So well, we'll hope that but you we get feel the... very good about it. We, we feel very good about it. I mean, like I said, they, they've been this third season, the, the, they've been super, super happy with all the scripts, and uh, and we, we we show them these animatics as they come in, and they've been very happy in telling us, oh, this is a great episode. We're so happy with it. So uh, we feel good about it. We'll hope you get for your your next three. We'll hope you get more of like a Star Wars deal where they just tell you, go ahead and bust out four, <laughs> five, and six. We know we're going to need them. 
<laughs> yeah, that would be all right. I mean, that would I'm sure we'd all be happy with that. But uh, very cool. They do they do they do things the way they do things, and you know that's that's the way it is. But it's fine. Uh, but I'd say I mean I can't tell you too much about it, but we're very super excited about about season three. Um, well, we're gonna have to pry a little bit. I mean, you left us uh, after the cliffhanger of season one. We thought was bad. After season two. <laughs> We're now <laughs> we're a little bit concerned with those condoms that they were using at the end of the episode. Yes, we, yes. We, uh, yeah, there were some. There were some. Well, no, they, they, you know, there were some condoms there, and things were happening with those. You can, <laughs> you know, you have to sort of uh, infer what you want, but um, all will be answered, you know, uh, right away. As soon as the season begins, we'll know what's going on. Uh, I can't tell you anything more about that, but uh, uh, I will say that. Um, we have some very, very exciting new uh, guest stars this year, uh, uh, some of which I can't can't really get, go into uh, until we get a little bit closer. We come Michael, out, but we're very, very tease. excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can say that, you know, this season three largely to a great extent, you know, where where season one was really about. The, the main focus of season one was about Frank's job and what was going to happen with the strike at the airport. And then season two really focused on uh, the marriage between Frank and Sue and, and the tensions between her working and his not working. Uh, season three, in a general way, deals with a lot about the dynamic around the neighborhood, our, our, our particular little cul-de-sac neighborhood and, and Frank's feelings about his status there and, and Sue's relationship with some of the women we're going to meet. We're going to meet the wives of two of our characters. Oh, wow. This year, we're going we're gonna to meet Mrs. Goomer. Uh, and, uh, Mrs. Bonfiglio, who's babe, you know, the, the guy named babe. <laughs> so we meet them. Uh, there's a new, there's a new couple that moves in up the street. So that, that's the, that's, those are our big guest stars, which I can't get into right now, well, but uh, they'll, that they'll be a major, <laughs> they'll be a major, a major, major part of this, of this story will be this new day, na- these new couple that moves in up the street. Um, yeah. And we get to meet some more characters, uh, you know, that we really fill out the, uh, Philip is our a little boy who's, you know, Bill's friend who, you know, has the kill book and all that stuff. <laughs> so we, we see more about him. He has a little brother that we meet this year. Uh, the little brother that he mentioned, he mentioned him in one episode in season one. He says he touched the soft spot on his head <laughs> when he was a baby. And that's why maybe he can't read. So uh, we meet him. His name is Anthony. He's, he's voiced by a really, really funny stand-up comedian named Al Ducharme. Who uh, does a lot of funny voices, but one of the, one of the things he does in his act, which is uh, really super funny, that Bill Burr had seen him, is uh, he does a great uh, just a bit about a, a little kid, you know, who just won't will talk your ear off and say nonsensical things. <laughs> so, so we use we use Al does the voice of um, of Anthony is his name, and then we meet uh, you know his mom Marie Philip's mom, his name's Marie Bonfiglio. And then we meet the grandmother who we meant, we briefly mentioned and we saw her for like two seconds last year. Her name is Nana Rose and she's played by Mo Collins and she's super funny. So a um, lot, lot, kind of expand the world a little bit and uh, have some fun with a lot of the other characters. We don't, we don't to- totally leave the airport. We stay at the airport. There's a lot of funny stuff with uh, my favorite character, Bob Pogo, Dave Keckner, and <laughs> Rosie, and uh, lots of fun, lots of fun. So, um, but we're very excited. Uh, I hope we're that we get that for 2018, and you don't have to hold it out to 2019. Though I, I do respect there's a lot of steps that uh, that have to be taken in between now and its release. Yeah, and, and if anyone out there is a fan of the show and wants to just sort of follow along, you know, I have a Twitter feed, but we also have a Twitter feed which is just show related, which is uh, at F I F F Netflix. And it's like the, it's called the Netflix or it's called F is for family writers account. And it's mostly me running it, but like, we'll put up pictures from editing sessions. So if you went on that right now and looked at it, you'd see like tons of pictures of a lot of the new characters and, and pictures of like our table reads. And like usually about two or three times a week, I'll put something up there, like a picture of, of us working on a, on an episode or an image from an episode we're working on. Well, and you retweet fan art too. I know I've seen a couple yes. of things you just, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of things you just did recently that I was really impressed with. There is that one cross stitch of the family portrait that I'm just thinking, Oh my God, how many hours <laughs> must have gone into that thing? <laughs> I, 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 I got to imagine that's real. That's, I guess you could maybe Photoshop it, but yeah, it was just, like a little Whitman sampler saying, I'll put you through that fucking wall. Yeah, uh, that was funny. I love that. that. I'm so happy. It, it <laughs> makes me so happy. We, in our writer's room back at the studio, our offices is just covered with a, a wall, our wall of fame of 
all the fan art and it's all so interesting and different and and there's there's people who draw the there's one particular young woman who likes to draw Kevin as if he's kind of like a My Little Pony style <laughs> character or a mermaid. Uh, I've seen on Tumblr some things that are like where they're kind of like uh, shipping, you know, as if as if uh, Kevin and his friend Bolo were 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 lovers, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Kevin and this really obscure character named Corey Mars, who was the teen angel. I'm sorry, the teen idol pop star who was barely seen in sec- season two. There's shots of Kevin hanging out with Corey Mars, and there's shots of, of the characters as if they were, you know, drawn like uh, Simpsons characters or drawn like the Loud family. And it's really great. I just, I'm thrilled to see people get into the show that much that they take time to draw the characters in that way and come up with fun things. Well, I think that's really cool for people that actually take the time to, to send you that art that you now have let them know that it's not just, you know, being tossed in the, in the garbage bin. You guys are actually taking the time and, and putting this up to appreciate it. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Has uh, Justin Long gotten to see some of the more creative artwork that has been done with his character? Has he had any uh, comments to say? I, I think he's seen some of it. We had a recording session with him last week where he lives in New York, so we usually don't see him in person here in L.A., but he'll be, like I'm talking to you, he'll be on like a satellite patch or something like that. So I told him about some of these things, and like I just mentioned to you about uh, you know him as a mermaid and stuff like that, <laughs> and he was very <laughs> excited about it, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that Kevin is like the second most popular character besides Frank. I mean, especially uh, you know, the I, younger younger people who are the fans of the show really get into Kevin. I was gonna say I think Kevin was probably my favorite story arc from from season two. Him and and Vic's lady and all all the shenanigans that that yeah. went down between them. Though honestly, the other character that I was surprised how how much I enjoyed her arc was Sue. I thought that was really, really interesting where she got involved with the uh, Tupperware cells and ended up actually inventing the salad spinner. Uh, and then yes. just her struggles being you know, a woman in a male dominated workplace. I thought that was an interesting way that you're taking a show that's set in the past, but dealing and in, in very much on the head and in, in tune with a lot of modern day issues. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we really, yeah, we really, I really love that whole, that whole arc too. And, uh, so she'll deal with, you know, uh, what the great thing about the show is that it, it moves forward. So everything that happened before informs what happens next. So this next season, you know, we'll start with her, Sue, sort of dealing with the fallout of what happened at the end of season two in terms of what happened with her invention, the salad tosser, and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> how she's going to try to move on from there and what she's going to do, what, what will her next chapter be. And, um, and and like that yeah so she is a whole and lord lord Dern is fantastic and great and we're going to be seeing her uh on thursday she can be recording a bunch of stuff on thursday but uh Very she's cool. so into the show she loves the show and she's so great and so she's got a lot of interesting things going on uh this year as well oh yeah she also is in star wars since that's uh, we yeah, just referenced a little bit ago yeah she had a, a big breakout role in that new uh that that little franchise that tends to do okay at the box office <laughs> yeah, she was awesome in that. Well, <laughs> she was an great. interesting thing. Ha- an interesting thing happened is that I still I still do a little bit of work with them with the Lego and, and Star Wars people. So there's a project that uh, they wanted me to look at um, that involved doing a, some Lego stuff about the Last Jedi. So um, I had the great good fortune and luck of being able to go in and, and read a script of the Last Jedi like a couple of weeks before it came out to sort of as research before doing this thing. And uh, so I had read the script and then I went to see her and do a recording studio, a recording session with her. And so I said, like, I said, I read the script of that thing. She's like, Oh my God, isn't it amazing? I said, yeah. I said, that, 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 that thing that you do, you know, without, without telling anybody else, like her, you know, her major thing that she does in the movie. I go, that's so cool. She goes, I know. She goes, I can't even tell my own kids about it. So, uh, <laughs> I know. so, um, Ultimate mom guilt right so, there. That's funny. Yeah, really, really. You should try to sit on that for a couple of years, you know, because those movies take a while to make. Oh, yeah. But um, anyway, she's great. She's terrific. And uh, we're so happy with everybody, everybody who's in the show this year. And uh, we're just so excited. Um, we Actually, we just got um, 
uh, the great Carol Kane, who is on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and has been in everything, you know, going back to like Annie Hall is going to be in the show this year. Oh, cool. Um, a bunch of other people and a lot of people from last year who were in it last year, like Allison Janney and Michael Kenneth Williams will be coming back. And uh, it's great. We're, we're so excited about it. And your your actors are actually mopping up. Your actors are mopping up right now in the award season. Too. Oh, and Sam Rockwell. I know. And Sam Rockwell and Allison Janney. I, I would have, I don't want to jinx anything, but. I think they have a pretty good shot to, to win Oscars in a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, no, we're so excited. And they're both just, they're both great people and we're so happy for them. So everything is going well with F is for family. And it seems like everyone agrees, even maybe another network Fox, because I saw that they like your work with Bill Burr so much that they're setting you up with another similar project. You're going to be doing a little thing with, uh, what is it? Kevin Hart, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, that is at this stage right now. It's what's called a presentation, which means it's like half a pilot. So okay. uh, when you when you well, because you normally if you if you come up with an idea for a new show, then you sell it to a network, then they go, okay, we're making a pilot. So you make one episode. Uh, but animation, you know, takes time and it, it takes money, and so in order to not have to take like a whole year, you know, to make a half hour. Uh, pilot episode they usually order what's called a presentation which is sort of like uh, instead of it being 22 minutes long it's 11 minutes long so basically okay. we're making it like an 11 minute long half a pilot uh but yeah it's very exciting i'm working with an amazing great writer named matt clay brooks who's a really funny comedian in his own right and a uh, great writer and um he worked on the chris rock show and he works with chris rock a lot did he and, also um, work with uh, everybody hates chris yes he was the writer and everybody yeah hates chris. I, I love that show i my yeah. wife and I still to this day quote so many things from that show at each other all the time, mostly uh, from Terry Crews. And I can't think of the mother's character, but anytime we catch either person doing anything, it's like, why are you acting so suspicious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great show. And uh, Matt is a, just a tremendous guy, a great guy, really funny uh, comic and great writer. And uh, we've, we've worked really well together and uh kevin hart is an amazing talent and we've got wanda sykes is in this and um a bunch of great bunch of great actors in this show so uh we're hoping you know right so there's no there's no 100 percent guarantee that it's going to go forward to get past this pilot or presentation but we're we're all very excited about it well with the backing i mean you got the successes of f is for family i know every everybody hates chris was a very successful show it went on for several seasons and I'm pretty sure Kevin Hart just has a license to print money right now. Like he, they just put that dude in everything, and it's like, yep, there's a few extra million dollars for your project. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. He's super talented, and um, you know, he's in our show. He's playing. Uh, he's voicing the kid version of himself. You know, like the 12 year old version of himself, and uh, he's fantastic. He's just such an amazing personality. Uh, so dynamic and, uh, uh, you know, energetic and just has a charm that just, just washes over you, you know? So uh, we hope that it all propel us to success with this and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Did you uh, happen to uh, catch Jumanji with him in the rock and of course. Other oh, oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> that movie, Absolutely. I think got a lot of negative press going into it. A lot of people are kind of dogging it. Oh, we don't need a video game version of this classic. And it's just like, I think they did an incredible job taking that into a modern age. And uh, he was one of, I mean, everybody in that movie was hilarious, but he was definitely a big part of helping that along. Oh my God. Yeah. It's huge. It's like the biggest, I think be, star Wars is maybe still no, number one, but Jumanji is like number two, or like movie of the year. It's incredible. Yeah. It, yeah it, last time I saw it, it, was, it was up over 300 million just in the U S the last time I yeah. looked at the numbers, like a yeah, huge, huge success. It's huge. Yeah. He, he's yeah. very talented. So you got a couple of, uh, you got great success going with F is for Family. We'll keep our fingers crossed that you're going to have that same success with Little Kev. But of course, we're here to talk about The Simpsons. So do you have any yes. juice or anything to uh, share from the behind the scenes of what's going on in the writer's room over there? Uh, well, no, we're just working along on season 30 right now. Uh, still, even though I know enough. that's true, it's still incredible to hear anytime you're like, yeah, 30th <laughs> season. It's just like, that's not real, right? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's fun. when we start talking about this episode about how, you know, it's episode 100, you know, and this, we're up to around 660 or something right now. So, Jeez. uh, it's wow. insane, you know, and, but we're still moving, we're popping along. You know, I have an episode that I wrote 
that will be on, I believe it's April 1st, if that's a Sunday. Is that, let me see, I'm looking at my calendar here, but I think, I believe it's on April 1st. It's an episode I wrote that's called Fears of a Clown, and it's a crusty centric episode. Yay. So uh, I love Krusty, and I've never written a full Krusty episode before. So this is a lot of Krusty. <laughs> uh, that's exciting. It's a really fun episode. So dirty. Um, <laughs> it deals. Yeah, really. It deals a little bit with uh, his fears of of not being uh, successful anymore. And uh, long story short, he decides to uh, something happens that basically gets him sort of washed out of being a clown. And so uh, with the help of Lisa uh, Simpson, he decides to become a serious actor and he's going to mount a production of uh, death of a salesman that he's going to star in. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh, awesome, and he hire and he hires us as director uh, returning, I believe for the first time in this role, except maybe for like a cameo here and there, but John Lovett says, yes. Claire. Oh, I was hoping uh, you were going to say that. Returns oh. as the director. So uh, <laughs> Lovitz is hilarious. You know, he improvised about 90% of all of his lines, and he's super really funny. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's it's a very kind of fun, silly episode. And I love Krusty, so uh, hopefully everyone will like it too. Yeah, we love Krusty as well. It's going to be an exciting one to check out. Just, again, thirty. it's, it's crazy to say, but a 30th season episode, uh, and we can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well great well thanks you know at the end of last year in december we all had our story day where we pitched new stories for this upcoming season 30 so we're all off on working on uh other scripts like that so i i just wrote a, i wrote one that we're going to be reading in a couple of weeks um that's a grandpa centric story so i'm excited about that one too but i can't tell you too much more <laughs> about that <laughs> That's just all, all you're doing today, Mike. Well, I've got something very exciting for you that I can't <laughs> like tell CJ you about. Abrams, I'm just going to keep teasing <laughs> you. Are you guys killing off Grandpa? Oh, no, no, no. Never, never. Never. No, oh, okay, go good. Woo. Oh, no, no. I, He's got too many good there. stories. <laughs> no, no. That's a lot. I'll say this is, this is a story that involves uh, a lot of flashbacks about something that happened to him uh, when he was a young man and, and the repercussions of it now. Um. Exciting. And uh, yeah, it's fun. I think it'll be fun. Very cool. Well, we've talked about it quite a bit, but we actually do have an episode to talk about today. It is the (laughs) hundredth episode of The Simpsons. It is Sweet Seymour Skinner's Badass. Is that enough, Richie? Thank you. I feel better now. You're very welcome. It originally aired on April 28th, 1994. And before we dive into that, I do need to take a quick moment and remind you, there's still time to enter the worst contest ever. We are going to be giving away five early release copies of Mike Reese's book that's coming out this summer, Springfield Confidential. And all you have to do to enter is use the hashtag worst contest ever anywhere on social media. And we're going to put your name in the hat to win one of those copies of the book before you can even buy it, which it is available for pre-order right now on Amazon.com. I'm sure that's going to be an awesome book. If if it's anything like the Mike Reese that I know and love, it sure will be very, very funny and great stuff. I uh, I may have been diving into an early release copy myself, and I, I can say nice. so far that uh, I, I had to pull myself away from it to start preparation for our podcast today. It's one of those books that you just do not want to put down, and I, I am quite confident that if you are tuning in for this podcast, you're definitely going to want to get your hands on that book as soon as possible. Oh, you know, Mike is one of the, probably one of the funniest people in ever to live so i'm sure it'll be a great book oh yeah now we can't we can't give you a copy of that book mike you're gonna have to go to him yourself <laughs> i have to go buy one hey, no you're you know what <laughs> mike, though? mike would want me to buy one anyway he would, not, he would want me to buy one <laughs> you're eligible to win though mike price you can put use that hashtag worst contest ever and we'll put your name I in the hat it's as well. like don't they say like employees and relatives <laughs> employees you know are not are not eligible so well that's so gonna go ruin our plans <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's dive into Sweet Seymour Skinner's badass song. The chalk yes. ba- <laughs> the chalkboard gag on this one was "I will not celebrate meaningless milestones." Well, we will, uh-huh. so we'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a that was a huge thing. Uh, you know, the get get to a hundred is for any show is is gigantic. So 
Well, that, that opens up opportunities stuff. for you guys in terms of syndication rights, I understand. Correct. I mean, that's like the base. They, they say like in TV, that used to be the magic number. Like if you had a sitcom or any show and you got to 100 episodes, then you were able to syndicate and, you know, sell it off to air on your local channels. And so, uh, yeah, I think I think by the time this one came out, The Simpsons were already in syndication. But um, <laughs> but uh, but still breaking no, but its own is, rules. Very many shows. Very. I'm sorry. Not very many shows get to 100 episodes. So, um, yeah. So I can imagine it was a big t- a big deal at the time. Very big. Is that what made you want to pick this episode to come on to talk about, or is it just something with Skinner? Mm, yeah, I love Skinner. I just love Skinner. Uh, you know, I think that Harry Shearer is justly celebrated for, you know, for all his characters, you know, especially, you know, Flanders and Burns are probably his two most high, high profile characters. But for something, something about me for him, the way he does Skinner, that just always hits the sweet spot for me. He, you know, cause, cause on paper and anyway, Skinner is this, incredibly dull boring man you know who just <laughs> lives lives with his mother and whatever clips coupons and whatever and and i think it's just harry's way of vo- voicing this guy who in in a lesser actor could just be incredibly dull but he makes him so funny he's so dry and i don't know and there's such pathos in him too especially in this episode i mean he's a very sad character and um I don't know. It's just, yeah, I just love Skinner. I love Skinner. And I love Chalmers. I love Skinner, the Skinner Chalmers dynamic. Oh yeah, God, those two together yes. are magic. Of course, is great. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They're great. So, uh, yeah, I just, this is an episode that I've always really liked a lot. And, um, and I, you know, I'm sure you got all this stuff in here, but going through it again, I hadn't realized how many firsts were in this episode like characters that we see for the first time and everything. So, uh, yes, it's fun. It's just a, a great, of fun <laughs> uh, what's actually kind of funny is we're right in this period of the show where we're starting to get a lot of first time appearances of characters that according to the commentary from people like Dave Merkin and Matt Groening, they say they were really initially just meant to be a one-off joke, but just because of this ever expanding universe that is Springfield, they would start reoccurring and then they start to get right. fan pages. Like last episode we talked about was the debut episode of the Estonian dwarf. And he has <laughs> fan pages dedicated to him. There, there are websites really? specifically for re- appreciating the Estonian dwarf that lives in Springfield. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Well, I you know like the, the, the one joke like that, that I know of, I mean, I wasn't around for this, but like his disco stew, you know, it just showed up. He was just a joke in that episode. I think the one with George W. Bush, right, where uh, George H. W. Bush, uh, where they're at the the uh, yard sale, and yeah. this is the, the yeah. you know it says disco stew on the back of that jacket, so it's like disco <laughs> stud, whatever. And he goes, disco stew doesn't need to advertise. And then it just <laughs> then he turned into a character who's like you know he's not around as so much anymore as much as he used to be a few years ago. But like that's great. I love it. I love when there's like a like a one joke character like that, and then becomes like a. Um, uh, you know, recurring like Luigi. I can't believe this was the first, first episode Luigi. Of Luigi. Episode. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually another one would be the uh, unibrow baby. <laughs> first yes. appearance of Maggie's that rival. Jerk. <laughs> 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 well, for around long enough, we'll end up doing a whole episode about him. But yeah, he's great. You know, I, I, see, see, I, I, see, when I joined the show, I was a fan, but not like, uh, you know, a super crazy fan. So even I didn't know until later when I read the internet that his name was Gerald. Gerald I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure where episode is where they call him Gerald. Uh, yeah, but, I had him um, written down as Unibrow Baby. I didn't realize he had a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, or that the um, the wise guy is called Raphael, but I don't know. There must be some episode where they call him Raphael, but we just call him wise guy. Wise guy, yeah. So, Michael, yeah. let me ask anyway. you something. As a uh, creator of the show, do you have the same disdain for the little logos and advertisements that pop up <laughs> during your credit that uh, <laughs> David Merkin seems to have in this couch gag? Sure, yeah, of course. I mean, it's all distraction, right? I mean, it's it's and it is way worse now than it was back in ninety four. Oh gosh, where, yes. Where there's like this, and you know, things are happening and moving, and like whatever the show on is next is showing up and. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like 
it's like just let the show be the show with the simpsons it's usually not too much of a, a post like a trailer gag but sometimes you'll have like some musical cues that are, are pretty humorous that tie into the theme of the the episode we just watched but it drives me even more crazy with certain sitcoms where they do have that trailer scene at the end of the credits or during the credits but the network is playing a snippet of the news or the next episode of whatever show is going to be coming on and you're like damn it i'm trying to enjoy the last few moments of the show i tuned in for i don't really care yeah. about the talking heads floating into the corners of my screen i agree i mean if i can go back to netflix for a second i mean that's the one little my one little peeve I have against Netflix is the way that, um, especially now, uh, you have to be really quick with the thumb if you want to watch the closing credits of yes. any Netflix show. Yep, that, that does bother it'll, me as well. It'll, it'll kick over to the next episode within about eight seconds. And, and uh, I don't like it because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a person, I think, you know, even before – even before Marvel started throwing in, you know, the, the mid credits, uh, you know, teaser scenes for the next movie, uh, I would usually stay and watch the credits of movies. I like to watch the credits. I like to learn what's going on. And, you know, and we, we put we put an effort into them. There's a song that goes over the end usually on our show. And or sometimes we'll have we have done some episodes after family where over the over the closing credits is an extra piece of dialogue or something like that. So I wish that, you know, I wish it wasn't so easy I wish Netflix didn't skip over to the next episode so quickly, but I guess it works for them. Not to throw too much uh, shade, because I mean, I, I I get it, and it is convenient as a viewer. But I re I'm reminded of a scene from the show Entourage where uh, Billy uh, Walsh, the director, I don't know if you're familiar with that series or not, but uh, it's of one course. of our favorite. But Billy Walsh stands up during the middle of a film fest during the credits, and he's screaming at people to sit back down and watch the credits. These people work <laughs> hard on this, and you're going to show them some goddamn respect. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah i feel that way i feel that way yeah i mean if i worked on a show i'd want all my friends to at least have an opportunity to see my name i mean even if it's like uh what happened to bart when he got to be crusty's assistants and it flies by in a blur <laughs> i can at least pause it and be like see told you i was part of this yeah yeah so <laughs> anyway uh but so so in that same way yeah i think the kind of intrusion intrusion of bugs or you know or t promos for the next show or whatever. Uh, in, in the body of the show, I don't like either. Absolutely. When we do finally get to the opening of this one, after the family absolutely destroys the Fox logo, we get a <laughs> sequence very reminiscent of the Wonder Years, complete with the song With a Little Help from My Friends, which is both an amazing song and arguably one of the greatest opening credits for any show in history. I love the Wonder Years. And this was a great Simpsons parody of that show. Yeah, yeah, it's very fun. Uh, I was just thinking when I watched it, it's like, wow, how much did they have to spend on that? Because not only is it, you know, Joe Cocker, but it's a Beatles song. I mean, I don't know how much they because <laughs> like those songs cost money. It's the hundredth yeah, episode. You know, you They're just going to reach deep in those pockets for this one. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, yeah, they because uh, you know when you whenever you want to license a song like that, it, you got to pay somebody a pretty good chunk of change. So, sure. but uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I, I was not a huge fan. I mean, I think when Wonder Years came on. I wasn't, I was watching something else. I, I was aware of it, but I wasn't like a giant fan of it. But, um, I watched reruns uh, as a kid and I was way in love with Winnie Cooper. Uh, so that was, that was my primary sure. force for, for tuning in weekly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've since in the year in, in now in more recent years, I've gotten to know Fred Savage a little bit because, uh, he, you know, he, he's acting a lot more now. Uh, but he's also a very good director. He directs so, uh, It's Always Sunny for Philadelphia. Yeah, he directs a lot of those, and then he's always trying to develop projects. So he, I had written a, uh, a what you would call a spec pilot, which is like you come up with an idea for a show, and then you just write it as if it's a script, and that he really liked, and he was behind in trying to get. He was. We took it out together, pitching it together over the course of like a year and a half or so, and we almost got somewhere with it, but it never quite happened. But um, he was very passionate about it and he's such a, he's a really wonderful guy, a wonderful guy. So it was really nice to get to know him. And even though I wasn't really a, you know, super fan of wonder years at the time, but uh, he's a really great guy. Sure. I actually grew up really, I, I kind of wonder years was actually just a little bit before my time when it, when it aired, but I, uh, my, my main show was boy meets world, which of course starred his brother, Ben Savage. So I, yes. I grew up watching the Savage family one way or the other. <laughs> 
And their father, Doc Savage. <laughs> That's just a joke. <laughs> That's savage. Bad joke. Uh, Doc Savage. <laughs> so we get this Wonder Years parody or, or homage more than, than anything where we see it's the story of Marge and, and Homer when they're young. Homer actually has this full beard, which is a great sequence until he accidentally catches it on fire, blowing out his birthday candles where he got a book about beards. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's right. And it transitions to the point where we see this is actually Bart watching home videos looking for some juicy footage to take in for show and tell. And he thinks this is going to be great until the film goes on and we actually see some embarrassing footage of Bart himself. <laughs> That's right. Sitting on the toilet. I, I love I want to I'd love to find out. Go back and ask somebody Merkin or if I if I see David Merkin in the next couple of days. Why did they stage that with them like shooting, showing home movies projected onto the refrigerator? <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's a good that's point. I'd like to know. I guess it had to be in the kitchen for some reason. So I'm sure there was a very good reason for it. But anyway. Uh, that's funny. You said, yeah, I didn't that's, even think that's, about that. But yeah, that is an unusual backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> and how come Marge didn't help Homer try to put the fire out in his beard? That's true. <laughs> that's true. And who was filming that? Oh, Ooh. wow. We're, this is raising a lot more questions than we're comfortable <laughs> with. Yeah. Quick, let's move on. <laughs> so we see Bart is just desperately trying to find something that won't embarrass himself to take the show and tell. <laughs> Great sequence with Lisa where Lisa's like, just take one of my geodes. Blank pause for several seconds before she has to say, the rock's on my desk. Only he gets <laughs> several options that there, unfortunately with Lisa, there's way more than just a geo. She picks up or he picks up several things before finally getting to the right one, including uh, I can't remember what it was, but it's basically an, an old fossil of a sea animal. There's petrified wood and then there was a bran muffin. <laughs> You yeah, Brand yeah. Muffin was looking pre or pretty good for show and tell, I think. <laughs> 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 yeah. What about the joke Marge made in the first scene where she said, how would you like it if 20 years from now people were laughing at things you did? <laughs> yeah, I love right. that moment. Uh, yeah, or even 30 likely. years. I mean, yeah, I know. My God. Well, it's 20, what? 24 25. years. Now. 25 yeah, 24, years. 24, yeah. 20 years. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Bart does finally settle on his dog, Santa's little helper, before uh, basically just barely making it on the bus in time. When he gets to school, he seems that he's not the only student who had some last minute preparation for show and tell. Because <laughs> Nelson is going over the ingredients on what he is sh pretty sure used to contain a uh, tomato paste, a can that used to contain tomato paste. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Mrs. Kerbopple's response here. Thank you, Nelson. I look forward to seeing it again next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably just leaves it in the classroom all the time. <laughs> Probably. No, I'm sure he goes home and sucks it dry, you know, because yeah, oh, a yeah, lot of, that's not a lot true. of food around right, here. Right, it's all the nutrients house. that the monsters are getting. <laughs> yeah. Weak old dried tomato paste. Yikes. Bart brings the class, he presents them with a riddle. What has four legs and ticks? And the entire <laughs> class gets hung up on the idea that Bart must have brought a walking clock to class. <laughs> Even Mrs. Uh, I love Nelson again. stealing stealing Milhouse's idea where Milhouse is like a walking clock, a walking clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wager he has come up with some variety of a walking clock in that box. <laughs> <laughs> Bart is still a walking clock. <laughs> the whole class is obsessed, but finally he reveals what? No, it's my dog. <laughs> it's every boy's dream to bring their dog to school for show and tell. I always asked that all the time when I was a kid. It was the greatest when people brought their pets because, yeah, I'm a dog lover myself. So anytime somebody would bring their dog, it would be a huge chunk of the day just getting to play with said dog. <laughs> uh, I Like I said earlier, we commented a joke that I was a, a little bit upset by. I'm not going to lie. My my bleeding dog heart here was, was destroyed by this joke when Mrs. <laughs> Kerbopel offers... Santa's little helpers, the raisin roundies that Martin had made for her. And raisins are, of course, poisonous for dogs. My dog, who has come inches from her life several times because she manages to find her way in the pantry. And she specifically seems to only like the things that are really bad for her. Uh, so this joke hit too close yep. to home. <laughs> yeah, my dog ate a light bulb once. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> I came outside and he was chewing on a light bulb. So what type of dog yeah, do you have? Okay, though he's fine. He's fine. What type of dog but, do you have? Uh, yeah, a golden retriever. Oh wow. Nice, yeah. very pretty, beautiful yeah. animals, but chewing on a light yeah. bulb—that's a—that's a pretty new low. Yeah, yeah. yeah not good, not good. <laughs> not, I thought it sounded like a good idea at first. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Uh, so all of this is leading up to the point where once show and tell is over, they have to come up with something to do with the dog, and and Bart just decides. He'll leave it in a closet, and at first everything's like, it'll be totally fine. <laughs> Santa's little helper Bart just goes do. to sleep. Right, yeah, that's a, that's the easy answer. That is a very Bart thing to do. And the, to be fair, at first it does seem like it's going to work out okay, until the scent from the lunchroom starts seeping through the vents into said closet, and then Santa's little helper is on a mission to get to that smell, which, to be fair, it is horse meat. It is horse meat, and it now has more testicles, which of course means more iron. That's <laughs> right. <More> testicles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Hoover, there's a dog in the vent. <laughs> Ralph, remember the time you said Snagglepuss was outside? <laughs> he was going to the bathroom. <laughs> I love that joke. I love that joke. Oh, uh, Ralph this jokes where, are this almost is back the in the best. day when Ralph was when Ralph could still put together sentences. Oh, true. <laughs> In the last 24 years, he's gotten a little less coherent. <laughs> we talk about how we think he speaks in um, haikus sometimes. It has <laughs> right. really far out there thoughts. Yeah, yeah. It's a very smart man, that Ralph. <laughs> That's right. Well, he did run for president. <laughs> that's true <laughs> oh that's right you even have that uh, I believe if I remember correctly from last time we spoke you have that on your wall with him finger in his nose proudly declaring his presidency I do I do I have a big Ralph for, Ralph for president 08 poster on my, in my office right now very cool Yeah. well all of this dogs in the vents leads to only one man who could possibly help and that is of course a greased up Scott named Willie <laughs> <laughs> what about when Skinner's on the phone with, I assume, or with Josh Weinstein, I'm assuming his parents. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> I mean, it sounds so made up. Yom Kippur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before we go any further, I'd say it's such a great script from Josh Weinstein and Bill Oakley. They, you know, those guys are just incredible. And their their episodes are always great, and then their their seasons as the showrunners are some of my favorites. So you know, just a big shout out to them. They're just really brilliant writers. Oh yeah, they, they've uh, they've been on a lot of the commentaries this past season because they've been very involved with the show in season five. It would seem, and they always have great insight and a lot of the stories they tell from just the, being in the writers' room at that time. It seems like just an incredible place to to create. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we get Willie greased up from the lunch lady, uh, Doris, which I actually really like the interaction between these two as well, because he just basically walks in and is just like, you got any grease? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 She's just so nonchalant about the whole thing, too. Yeah. That's the best part in my mind. <laughs> Uh, so we get this sequence where Willie is actually chasing down the dog. Actually, the first thing he does is he sticks his face up into the vent and Santa's little helper just licks him and walks on by. Truly a menace. <laughs> so they, they have to make this big deal. Skinner announces, children, don't be alarmed. There's a dog in the vents, which, of course, w everything would have been fine had he not said anything. Uh, how right. does Bart not realize that that's his dog that's in the vents? Like, how many other <laughs> how dogs, many other are, dogs are in school that day? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I really enjoy this little sequence where Willie is chasing Santa's little helper in the vents, or maybe we should say Santa's little helper is chasing Willie because there's this this yeah. great homage to, to Aliens where Skinner's watching a monitor, and it's very much like when they're tracking uh, in the movie Aliens when they're they're hunting for the alien. Uh, at the time, they think it's just the one, and uh, oh my god, it's coming up right behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. That's a brilliant uh, homage to aliens there. It's good stuff. <laughs> oh. So this all, of course, leads to uh, eventually Willie does get Santa's little helper, and it seems like everything's going to be A-OK. -okay, but of course, 
where he happens to catch up with them is one of the only places that it's insanely dangerous to get out of the vents. <laughs> They're in the gymnasium, so he's he's you know a good hundred feet up in the air. I don't know however up how high up it is, but he's way higher than it's safe to climb out of, and the vent starts to break with him in it. So the fire department has to be called, and of course Chalmers wants to come and see what Skinner did to screw it all up this time. I like the the Willie Skinner yelling at each other without actually using bad words. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I totally skipped over that. You're right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Willie called him a croquet playing mint muncher, <laughs> <laughs> and Skinner said, "You you guff speaking work slacker." Ooh, good comeback. <laughs> uh, I love the the matches or like the cursing that Willie does. That it sounds so aggressive, but he's not actually saying anything too terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, we get the classic interaction we talked about between Skinner and Chalmers, where Skinner is immediately just like, oh, uh, you, you didn't have to come all the way down here, sir. Everything's under control. And, of course, right then, the, everything starts to go even worse when the fire department falls off the ladder and lands in the, <laughs> what is it, the scoreboard for the basketball court? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, like, this, is just sort of the be- uh, this is sort of the beginning of this. I think this is predates... Right, I'm sure it does. Yeah, it predates the Steamed Hams episode. Yes, it does. Which I think it was a yes, season or two later. And then, of course, uh, the other great Skinner uh, Chalmers episode, the Armin Tamsarian one, <laughs> which I know has a lot of controversy over that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just great to see that. I know those guys, J- Bill and Josh, really, really loved uh, Chalmers and Skinner. And, you know, they really always had a great, did a great job with them. This is sort of the beginning of that greatness. So uh, there's a little bit of question, or at least there was at the time that this aired, is a lot of people wanted to know why this episode was chosen to be the 100th episode. And a lot of that had to do with they felt, the the creators at the time felt that they should go back to a Bart-centric episode since Bart was originally supposed to be the main character of the show. Of course, we know from just even the first 100 100 seasons, that's already transitioning to more Homer. (laughs) If we're lucky, 100 seasons. 100 uh, 100 episodes, excuse me. Yeah, 100 seasons. I'm down for 100 seasons if you guys can keep bumping them Mm -hmm. out. (laughs) But but this was a Bart-centric episode they had in the can, but just to show or demonstrate, we've talked about in the past, especially with uh, Lisa vs. Malibu, Stacey, Sometimes the marketing department and the creative department are not on the same page because the marketing team at Fox wanted to make this a big hoopla about the 100th episode. And they were actually advertising at the time that this was going to be Bart's biggest prank ever, getting Principal Skinner fired. And the creatives, all all of you guys in the writer's room are just like, uh, what? Like, we didn't. That's not what this episode is about. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times the advertising yeah. department just they just want to tell the best story. Uh, we we recently reviewed Lisa versus Malibu Stacy and they chose to put an advert out where Bart was holding Malibu Stacy in a manner where it looked like he was looking up her skirt. So very not in tune <laughs> with what that episode is about and this is another great example of the marketing department going a different direction. So they were kind of, I, I guess there wasn't too much complaint when there was like, wait, was Bart's biggest prank putting the kick me sign on him at the end? Cause that's the only prank <laughs> that happened in this episode. <laughs> For now, though, we see that this non-prank, this was just an accident, really, or I I, I don't know, maybe an irresponsibility by letting the dog stay in the closet. It's somebody's fault, but I don't think it's necessarily Skinner's fault. Chalmers doesn't care. He's pretty much tired of him anyway. The low test scores, class after class of ugly, ugly children. (laughs) Oh, no, I really don't think the children's appearance... (laughs) And everything seems to be going really bad. Skinner's on the verge of being fired until Santa's little helper actually falls out of the vent and lands right in Chalmers' arms, instantly melting his heart. I mean, who's going to stay mad after you're holding a puppy? You you can't. However, things (laughs) things instantly turn worse when we hear from above Willie yelling out, Make way for Willie! <laughs> <laughs> I love how mean he is about it, too, after he lands on him. I said make way for Willie, you bloated gas bag. <laughs> and immediately Skinner is fired. I'm sorry, did you just call me a liar? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said you were fired. Oh, yeah, that's much worse. <laughs> 
<laughs> a, much, a much quicker act one than what we're used to. It was a very fast act one. That does bring us to the end of our first act. And yeah, this one uh, pretty quick. But as we know, a lot of times the first act of The Simpsons is just a, a move to set up the main story for the rest of the show. And this is no exception to that. We are now in a Skinnerless Springfield Elementary School. We are going to take a very quick break to hear from our Potter and family, and we will be right back with Act 2 of Sweet Seymour Skinner's Badass Song. Actually, everyone, this conversation once again just got a little bit long, so we're going to go ahead and cut that right there. That's back-to-back episodes with great guests and great conversations that we had to just split into two to get all of that content to you. We can't thank Mike Price enough for being so generous with his time. He is still around for most of this episode. He does have to cut out a little bit early, but there are some great stories still to be heard, and he will be with us through most of Act 2. So make sure you come back next week and join Richie the Wiz Kid, myself, and Michael Price for our conclusion of Sweet Seymour Skinner's Badass Song. In the meantime, make sure you follow Mike Price on Twitter. He is at Mike Price in L.A., you can also follow the F is for Family Writers Room at F-I-F-F Netflix. Richie the Wiz Kid is, of course, at the Wiz underscore Kid 23, and I am at Mr. Most Days Off pretty much everywhere. Also, of course, follow the show at Best Darn Diddly. That's D-I-D-D-L-Y. Make sure and come and check us out next week for the conclusion of this episode, and until next time, be cromulent to each other. Hey, this is The Toe, host of the Gravity Beard Podcast, a variety show with interviews and discussions on a wide range of topics. Our guests have included a viral YouTube star, a former child actor. We've even had a guy on who may have solved the D.B. Cooper case. It's a delicious box of audio chocolate. You never know what you'll get. Find it on Podbean, iTunes, and other places you listen to podcasts. It's the Gravity Beard Podcast. It's what your ears will want to be listening to.